Hello, today we are going to be looking at Pythagoras Theorem. Before we get started, let's just look at some background information you will need to know. So, Pythagoras Theory will only work on right angled triangles. That is a triangle that has an angle of 90 degrees. That is represented with a square like this. One term you will also need to know is what the longer side of a triangle is called. The longer side is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. There's two ways you know it's the hypotenuse. First of all, just by looking at it, it's the longer side. And second of all, it's always directly opposite to the right angle. Now that we got those two things out of the way, let's look at what this is. So, Pythagoras theorem is a way to find one side of the triangle if you're given two others. So say you're given this is 3 and this is 4, I can use Pythagoras theory to know that this side of the triangle is 5. But how do I do that? I use the formula. The formula for Pythagoras theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It can also be written the other way. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I usually like to write it the second way, but makes no difference. So what does this formula mean? Each of the letters in the formula represent a side of the triangle. C represents the hypotenuse. A and B don't really matter, but generally A represents the shortest side and B the second longest. Once we have that, we just solve for this equation. So, to solve, substitute in the values. So C squared, if we didn't know this was 5 and we're finding C, we go C squared equals A squared, so we substitute for A. A is 3, so this is 3 squared plus B, which is 4, so plus 4 squared. We keep working down, so C squared equals 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16. And then C squared equals 9 plus 16, which is 25. But we're not quite done. We have C squared equals 25, but we're looking for C. To get C by itself, we take the square root of both sides. The square root and the squared will cancel each other out to give us C. So C equals root 25, which is 5. That is a basic example of Pythagoras theory. We'll look at one more that's slightly harder, just to confirm that you know this. Let me just get this out of the way. Okay, this example will make this side 5 and this side 8. So we have our sides labeled. So c squared equals a which is 5, so 5 squared plus b which is 8, so 8 squared. c equals 25 plus 64. c equals, that goes to 89. So now we take the square root of both sides to get c by itself. So c equals, but wait, this will often happen. What's the square root of 89? 89 is not a perfect square, so it will be a decimal. When this happens, you need to grab your calculator and type it in yourself. So you go square root of 89 get it to a decimal and this says the answer is 9.43 goes on for a long time generally you want to round it to two decimal places unless the answer says otherwise so C is equal to 9.43 sorry if that's messy so Hypotenuse is 9.43, and that is Pythagoras' theorem. Now if you have 
two sides and are not trying to find the hypotenuse and instead trying to find B when you have this side and this side given, that's a slightly different formula. This formula only works when you're trying to find the hypotenuse. I'll release another video shortly on how I find the other two sides. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment if you have any questions. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you.